Welcome to the brand new map, Brandy Hills in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil. We have Isengard versus Gondor. I mean, Isengard feels pretty strong in the current meta, but maybe this Gondor player, who is known as Armustang, can make it work. And also, brand new map, Brandy Hills, you get it? Brandy, brand new. And Uruks with Warchant are gonna chase those soldiers. And they are pressing S move, S move to deny the incoming damage. And I believe one of them is gonna be still taken down. But the settlements are kinda far away. And the Uruk number 2 was already able to make it to the field. And also Slaughterhouse has been built up, which is tankier compared to Alamir Mill because it starts with level 2 and also gives you more money. And a tower here would be able to protect. But remember, he was opening with a furnace and a Uruk pit, so he won't have the money to do all of that shenanigans, okay? So he's deciding to fight this. The Hobbit is gonna make it to this location. In the meantime, he's going for the farm number two in the base. And the money now will be saved for the stable. In the meantime, Eisen was able to capture the settlement, but the Hobbit is leading up to this location to kill some of the workers from Pistolero. And the soldiers are still remaining on the field. But they will go down very soon in a 3v2 situation. The Uruks are still superior and also stronger. The furnace number 2 is built up. And the problem with the opening here is that he has only one lumber mill, which means he has not any wood bonus, which would grant him some cost reduction on his, on his structures. But it only counts from the lumber mill number 2. So 2, 3, 4, 5 will give you more and more. But one of them doesn't give you anything. The Hobbit is going to micro around. The host player of this game is also the Gondor player, which is super important when it comes to micro the horses. The horse advantage in this game super important. And the good thing is he was able to keep the settlements alive. But the bad thing is he was not able to creep anything. The stable already built up. And the first Knight of Gondor is going to be recruited very, very soon. And I believe that's going to be the first creep from Aizen might even be the last creep but the uruk pit will hit level two after this uruk comes out so pretty much at the same time as the knights of gondor will appear on the field and i believe they will be going to this location first nah never mind oh he has no vision but he has vision now he has no length it's on cooldown who's going to get the creep though isengard was able to take it the money goes to gondor one part of the money and the other part of the money goes to isengard I mean, he will get lots of experience points here, might even be able to hit level 2, and also one more settlement. But the good thing is, Aizen is able to keep him away from his own settlements, which means all of these were able to keep up, uh, to be protected. But this one is not producing any money for Aizen, because he has no workers working for his lumber mill. The Hobbit will need some time to destroy it, but it will go down slowly but surely. Unless the pikemen will make it to this location to bring the hobbit to bring the hobbit to Isengard. Ah, he wasn't able to get cloaked. Now it's you and me, BB. Full of a took against the pikemen. He is microing, but the cloak cooldown is kind of long enough. And the pikemen are faster compared to the hobbit. And the hobbit will be taken down. Okay, good looking base for Isengard. He has in total five furnaces in the base before the first settlement was destroyed. And now it's all about creeping, 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 creeping. So you want to deny your opponent from creeping to deny him to reach to the three power point power spike, which would unlock the great company. The goblin creep here, no problemo for the Gondor. He will be easily able to take it down. Nizen could do the same also to this goblin layer around this location. The Uruk pit is going to hit level three very soon. That's going to make it quite tanky. But so far, Gondor has a full base already, you know? And he has two, two Knights of Gondor, and he's going for the Captain of Gondor, Boromir. Will Boromir be able to see the glory days of Gondor once again? That's the big question. And also, I was not making any videos for a long time. Sorry for that. Life is quite busy now. But I will try my best to make it to my PC every once in a while. The creep will be kind of difficult for Gondor, but I think he's going to pull it off now. Now he needs to bring... Oh, now you need to always lure the troll because the troll will smash you in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You have, no ch you have no chance. Pikeman with the war chant made it to this location. No lords, no Sharku, no war riders yet because there is no uh, barracks. 
And you have no barracks, you don't need to make the Vorks as Eisen against Gondor. You can on only skip with your pikemen and upgrade them, give them blades and banner. And even heavy armor would make it actually quite decent. Eisen has good map control, but the knights were able to clear up those pikemen, no problem on the Alvin Wood. Forge blades purchased, Boromir has been recruited, and he's almost level 4 already. There is still one more troll creep around this location. This goblin layer was just taken away from the pikemen. And once the troll there here will be taken down, there won't be any creeps left anymore on the map Brandy Hills. Lourdes has been recruited. Now you need to be careful with Lourdes because without level 3, he cannot fight and win against Boromir. You need to be unlocking the carnage, super important. And we have hobbits lurking around this area, brand new map. Huge shout out to the Maker, he's going for the armory now. I would still like to go for Sharku. Sharku is pretty good against Knights though, pretty nice, he's super fast and you can also give him Palantir to keep chasing some of the enemy Knights of Gondor. He's going now for the creep with the Pikeman and Lord's combination. Here we have Boromir fighting against the Pikeman, just like in the films. And he's level 4, super important uh, level up for Boromir. The 60% the more DPS even works on the Knights of Gondor and also later on when you summon the Grey Company and put Boromir next to the Grey Company, uh, the Rangers, the summoned Rangers will actually hit way harder, you know? The Lords might be in trouble, but there is some pikemen to back up. Super close to the Grey Company summon, but still a quarter power points needed. Armory, he's going for the banner first. Forge Bleeds next, but he's kind of broke. He needs a bit more money. Uh, you want to leave it to Lords though, uh, that's unfortunate. If you leave it to Lords, he would hit level 3 there, and that means whenever he is able to Triple Boromir is a natural counter to Boromir because his carnage won't even make won't only make him much stronger compared to Boromir, but also make it a real counter to Boromir's passive, which is a knockback and knockdown. So Carnage will grant you knockdown resistance for Lourdes. It means he will not be getting knocked down anymore, which would be the only thing to counter uh, Lourdes as Boromir. That's gonna be a big push incoming, boys. We have multiple Knights of Condor. They have shields, heavy armor, and blades. They are super tanky. One of them is coming from the top side. The micro here is super important. In the power points now, he has them for the great company. Always hold ground stand, super nice. I like it. So they don't run automatically into stuff. And he's gonna spend more and more knights, actually. You wanna go for a big push now. And the good thing about the Great Company is, because he needs only half a power point for the heal, with the Great Company, all you gotta do is kill some of the pikemen, and you will get the missing power points. That comes to summon, they have no heavy armor, they will be melted. Remember, there is a bottom leadership also for the Great Company, that comes to Alvin Wood summon to deny the Vorchan from the pikemen. He's gonna counter this with the own Tainted Land, but without the heavy armor, and without the Vorks, you cannot really fight this. Now he has heavy armor, but the Great Company is able to get away, and there comes the big push. We have three Knights of Gondor invading the Isengard Castle. What can Lourdes do? There are not too many pikemen in the base to defend such a big push. The level 2 furnace is going to be going down slowly, but surely the towers don't hurt them anymore. Look at the DPS, it's not the greatest, so you need to be super careful about this. And if you don't demolish the structures in time, you will feed more and more power points for a big push. Half of the base barely taken down. Great company, they have still some time left and they will use the time they have left to kill even some more pikemen. There is a level 3 furnace, it's shooting non-stop, dealing constant damage. But the more levels on the knights, the more resistant and the more HP they will get. And it means the harder it's gonna become to kill them with your towers. So you need, against a good player, you need multiple pikemen at every stage of the game in your castle. But once the furnace, all of them hit level 3, you don't really need that anymore because then the self-defense and self-durability of your castle is going to be improved big time. Make sure those new have their I like this map actually. Look at this beautiful waterfall here, boys. I mean, if a professional mapper now and he has been also making the map tributes of Harden, for example, the last bridge was made by him and also now the Brandy Hills. So huge shout out to Power Kartoffel. Who's the crater? Oh, beautiful positioning here with the pikemen. I like it. More and more rushes happening over and over again. Getting more and more experience. It's gonna become scary because he has already almost three power points in the bank. So he might go for the Gandalf. He might go for the Eagles. He has plenty of options. 
and Isengard is in jail. He is prisoned. He can't really leave this area at all. Oh my god. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to as he's turning from Ganon the Grey into the Ganon of the White. And he comes now at the turn of the tide. Okay, so I think the plan is, look, you see what he's beating him, actually. He want he want him to cripple Boromir. That's why he's sending him forward. And, but I think Isengard maybe was able to see the Ganav. Oh, there comes the history. Beautiful. Beautiful. And not even crippled. And... A boom, son. The PowerPoint farming machine has been unlocked, and the only counter to that would be Lurz. But he's level three. He would need a minute and a 45 seconds to get back on the field. There comes the lightning sword. Get even more pikemen. What a gomber performance, actually. Super clean, and that's how you want to play this, actually, guys. Utilize your strength and micro like crazy. The horses with this much leadership can even fight the pikemen with the forge plates, no problem for them. The knights are super beefy. There comes another blast. With the gun of the white power point, your blast cooldown will be reduced to 30 seconds only. So every 30 seconds you are able to kill an army worthy of Mordor over and over and over again. Palantir will be used. The Uruk pit level 3 is super tanky. But also the knights are super tanky. With the Ganav leadership, they are barely taking any damage uh, from the towers. You know. <laughs> oh, League Lord is back on the field. But I don't see any way of coming back to this game for the Isengard player. Now, the, the thing is, even if Lords is able to cripple Bor um, Gandalf, I mean, I don't think he got what it takes to take him down. Like, he has not a big army to take him down. The pikemen will kind of get killed before they can make it to him. But even if they could make it to him, he has a blast to kind of blast him away. So, you need, like, a bigger army to be able to commit to this Gandalf, who is protected by the Knights of Gondor. And Pistolero, Pistolero knows that and will leave the game in Gondor will take the W in this uh, 1v1 matchup on the man Brandy Hills. I hope it was kind of a good video for you because I've seen people complaining in the comment section down below about Isengard being too strong. And it's always nice to see, you know, that Isengard can bleed. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.